Hi, this is Eric from MapleSoft. I'll be talking about doing statistics on data frame objects. Since we'll be doing statistics and most of the commands that we'll be working with today live in, in the statistics package, uh, that's the first thing we'll do is to load the statistics package. The next step is to obtain the actual data we'll be working with. Uh, I'll be working with the Iris data set which is a data set we ship with the product. So you can then import the data just directly from the Maple data directory as follows. You can see that there are four numeric columns here, something called sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width, and then a column of species, which are all strings. So the sepal and petal what they are is illustrated in this picture that i found on wikipedia um, they're both a particular type of leaf-like thing that occurs in a flower and um, so this data frame now contains the length and width of these leaf-like things for particular iris flowers and their subspecies is given in the in the last column so what exactly happens in this uh, species column well we can just index the data frame with the name of the column and then we get what, what's called a data series which is just that column by itself um, and if we convert this to a set we can see that there are three different species that are described by this data frame. Next thing that we might want to do is to just see a summary of the numerical data. Um, so for that first let's isolate the numeric data from the rest. Um, so the in this case that's easy. The We had the first four columns were numeric data so we can obtain that by just indexing the data frame with the range 1 to 4 or equivalently we can omit the the one at the at the left that's the default for the for the range is to start at the beginning and we can say minus 2 to indicate the second from the end um, so after we set the display precision to four digits now we can um, get a data summary for this um, data frame uh, with the data summary command and it will embed its results into the worksheet uh, if we give it this uh, summarize option and then what we see is some statistics for each column so we have the mean for each column uh, the standard deviation and some higher moments the minimum and maximum and also interesting the commutative weights which in this case basically means just the number of observations so we see there are a total of 150 rows in this data frame each descriptive statistics command in maple uh, can also work with data frames each individual descriptive statistic uh, for example the median command if we apply that to the data frame it will just give us the medians for each column and the result here is a data series so here's another example um, the median deviation command which gives the median deviation from the median uh, will give us that for each column here um, so what we've done so far is just descriptive uh, if we want to um, do some data manipulation we can also do that um, and the first thing that I'll show here is um, to make accessing these columns a little bit easier to save on typing um, there is a feature that you can use so I've already shown that you can just use the column name to index the data frame and then you get the, the given column um, but if you use the with command as I will do now 
um, that makes each column name represent the column directly. So there's no referencing iris data anymore. You just type sepal length and you get the sepal length column. So for example, to use that, we can now uh, give a histogram of all sepal lengths. There we go. Um, okay, so now we get to the point where I actually show you some data manipulation. So the scale command is a command that can do that. And um, what it does, if we do it for this single column, is it gives us a um, shifted and scaled version where the mean and standard deviation are normalized to zero and one respectively. So if we give this result the name scaled and we now compute the mean and the standard deviation, well, we see that there is some numerical round off, but the mean is in the order of 10 to the minus 15 and the standard deviation is one. So that is as promised. If we now look at this histogram, we compare this with the previous histogram. So I'll scroll up a bit. We can see that the shape of the data set is still the same, but it's just the mean and the standard deviation that have changed. It's now centered around zero and has a standard deviation of roughly one. The fact that it is the mean and the standard deviation that are normalized is um, not um, prescribed. You can also use different statistics that you want to normalize. So here's an example. Um, you can subtract the median from this column and then um, scale it by the median deviation to obtain a data set that has median zero and median deviation of one. So again, if we compute, if we display a histogram, then we see that this looks very much the same as before, except not exactly because now it's the median and the median deviation that we have normalized. Um, we can also apply the scale command to the data frame as a whole. So here is uh, the data frame beforehand. And if we scale it, we get the new data frame. Um, we can now show a histogram of um, the first column, for example. And we will see that this is now scaled uh, by itself. So uh, scale command applies to each column separately. So it doesn't mix um, column values. Uh, that's generally not what you'd want in this situation. The next topic that I'll talk about is a statistics related command that is new in Maple 2016. Uh, it's strictly not part of the statistics package, um, but part of the data frame object itself. Um, and how it works is as follows. So it's actually easier to work with in this case, if we undo the with command for the data frame that we did before. Uh, so that we get the name species back again, just as a column name. And uh, what happens is if we call aggregate iris data with respect to species is the observations are now split out into subsets depending on the species column. And for each of these subsets, it computes um, some function um, for each column. So in this case, the default value is the, the default function is the mean. So we can see that the mean sepal length for the uh, Setosa observations is about five. It's a bit more for the versicolor and again, a bit more for the Virginica. And same for uh, these other columns. 
um, we can also have the aggregate command compute other quantities for us. For example, here is uh, the median um, of each sub data set or indeed the um, median deviation within each sub data set. Uh, and in this case, we also use the tally option to give us a count of each subset. So we can see that there are equally many of each subspecies. The next example that I'd like to show is um, aggregating with respect to a different column. So, so far we've been aggregating with respect to the species column, which is of course discrete, right? They are just three different strings. But you can also aggregate with respect to a continuous valued column. Uh, in that case, you need to somehow specify what the bounds of the bins are that you want to subdivide these values into. And one of the ways you can do that is uh, by specifying uh, quantiles. So in this case, what we're going to do is um, the first bin is from the minimum or the zero quantile till the one third quantile. Then there's a bin from the one third to the two third quantile and from the two third to the maximum. So if we do that, we'll see that um, as you'd expect, this roughly divides again the data into thirds, but it's not exactly into thirds. Um, so why would that happen? Well, this is um, data where some uh, observations occur multiple times. And in particular, this two thirds quantile occurred multiple times and they all are put into one of the bins, the, the same value is put in the same bin. So that means that we can't get a perfect 50, 50, 50 in this case. And once again, we have um, the means for each subset. Next, I'd like to show some um, visualization commands. Um, so we've already seen that you can obtain a histogram of uh, a column of a data frame. Um, similarly, you can obtain a line chart um, and essentially all um, statistics visualization commands work this way. So uh, you can do that for a single column or for multiple columns, which in this case will by default be shown um, as uh, four curves in a single plot. Um, if we do the area chart, so this looks very similar to the line chart for the single uh, column case, but if we create the area chart for all four columns, by default it's displayed uh, in 3D with the data sets shown uh, offset from each other. Finally, I'd like to show some visualization commands that are new to Maple 2016. Um, the first uses principal component analysis. So um, this is actually uh, in, in two steps. So the first is we apply the actual computational uh, part of the principal component analysis, which um, returns a record that has a number of properties of the um, uh, result of the computation. And then we use the biplot command, which we supply with this record. And this now shows us a visualization. So what this shows is that there are some directions in the column space given by this um, rotation matrix here it shows us the first two directions. So the first direction is mostly in the direction of petal uh, length and the second column is mostly in the direction of uh, sepal length and sepal width. And um, if 
you look at this, this visualization, you can see that that's correct. And um, the interesting information is that 92% of the variation between the data points can be found in this first direction and 5% um, can be found in this second direction. Um, and finally, I'd like to show you the grid plot command. Um, this is a very versatile command for creating a grid of plots showing one column of data versus a different column. So by default, it shows a grid of scatter plots. So this is a scatter plot here of the sepal length versus the sepal width. Um, and uh, that's basically how this works. So the off the angle entries are um, plots of one column versus another. Um, and for example, so you can specify um, what command is used to create the upper diagonal entries um, and what a command is used to uh, create the uh, below diagonal entries. So for example, if we want to Uh, use an agglomerated plot for below the diagonal, we can specify that uh, as follows. And now um, we get two different types of plots um, above and below the diagonal. That brings us to the end of this presentation. Thanks for your attention.